should we be doing as far as our spirituality and the religion, okay? Well, we know that the works that we're supposed to be doing, as Jesus told us, is to believe on him. Whom the Father sent, the Father yes. Sent Peter wrote, 2 Peter 1, 3, and he said, speaking of God, he says, His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. All right? So, speaking of the scriptures, for whatever was written in early times was written for our instruction, right? Mm -hmm. Think of this. It's not a secret. Yeah. Correct. It's not a secret. Correct. I'm going to read you something. Correct. All right? I'm going to read you from the prophet Micah, Old Testament. Micah 6, verse 8. He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? See that? He's told us. He's told us. But do justice to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. That's what God requires. And if you look at the verses prior to that, he's talking about, it's not about the, the, the offerings. It's not about the burnt offerings. It's not about the fat of rams. It's about this. This is what it says. He has told you, O oh man, what is good. Here's what he wants. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. To do justice. Now, I don't think that that translation does justice with the term do justice. Okay. Okay. Would you elaborate? Yeah. Is that circular reasoning? <laughs> <laughs> the reason for that is the Hebrew word that's used there and is, and I, I'm, I'm going to read you now from a definition in Strong, right? It's a verdict, favorable or unfavorable, pronounced judiciously. And I think I had mentioned in other studies how God has a legal system. You know, he's called mountains to, to, to bear witness against us and everything, right? In the King James, that's translated do justly. In the English Standard, it's called do justice. And in the Young's Literal, it says do judgment. Okay? But here's the deal. When you understand this, if it's if it is a, a, like a legal judgment, what it requires is an appraisal. Think of what Paul wrote to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2.14, he says, But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. A praise, this, and the King James translates it this way a number of times, is to discern. Okay? okay? And, that, and that's the same thing, all right? In, in 1 Corinthians, it's, it's translated judge and it's translated discern. Where here it's translated a, a praise. Right? We have been given discernment. Okay? I'm going to read again. from. I'm going, this is a Bible study, so don't be surprised. I give you the Bible. Hebrews 5, 11 through 14. Concerning him, talking about Jesus, we have much to say. I got a lot to say. Hallelujah. And it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Now, this is the writer of Hebrews writing to the people of God and saying, you become dull of hearing. That's the problem. The word hasn't changed. Jesus saying, come to me, all of you who are weary, that hasn't changed. But when we become dull of hearing God's word, it becomes a burden. He says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. Talking about the word. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But the solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. God desires, should I say demands, that we have a biblical world view and see all things through the lens of God's word.
You're looking at the news. Are you thinking about God's word when you look at the news? When you hear about this going on and that going on? If you're not, you, you, you have become dull of hearing. A, a recent Focus on the Family article quoted Barna, Barna, the Barna Research Organization. And I just want to read this to you. A recent nationwide survey completed by Barna Research Group determined that only 4% of Americans had a biblical worldview. 4%. When George Barna, who has researched cultural trends in the Christian church since 1984, looked at the born-again believers in America, the results jumped sky high to 9%. That wasn't a direct quote. Were, the results were a dismal 9%. Mm -hmm. scary. The Lord has given us his word to guide us. From your precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and I, sworn and I will confirm it, that I will keep your righteous ordinances. Psalm 119, verses 104 to 106. Everybody knows that 105, you know. But that's it. God's given us a light in the, to get us through this darkness, the darkness of this world, and it's called His Word. Thy word is strength. Thy word is power. Your word is kind. And your word is true. Thy word is a lamp. Unto my feet and a light Unto my path I would have I hid, O oh God In my heart My heart That I might not sin against Thee 